So as congratulations, you are the first team to reach the semifinals here at the World Championship. Uh, I actually just want to start with before this game, you guys actually got placed against the Flash Wolves. Now, some people were saying that you guys had sort of uh, similar, uh, were slightly similar stylistically in the sense that you both play sort of a slower early game and you play more for the mid and late game. Do you feel that sort of the fact that you guys had a stylistic similarity in that sense um, was it gave you an advantage over them or was it sort of like a weakness in that sense? Um, I think it was kind of an advantage because, I mean, maybe they will feel the same way, but I think that we had better calls the leading to mid to late game. So I think it was more of an advantage for us than them. And overall, we had like <coughs> better late game beside the... Um, I think we had played Darius and we had Jinx. I'm not sure if we had late. I think it was like 50-50, but we ended up doing... A, like giving up a few kills, then they got like two mid turret and something and something like that. So it was really hard uh, after giving a few kills and a few objectives. But besides this one game, I think that we had better picks and bans in the all three others. Um, though Flash Wolves actually had some really good mid games, I actually think. Uh, you know, you guys took over a few of the early games, but the Flash Wolves, particularly in games one and three, had some actually pretty good mid game plays. They caught you, they got a few kills, and they actually started to come back or pull ahead a little bit. Why do you think that the Flash Wolves sort of got the drop on you guys in the mid game, but you guys came back in the late game? Um, I think it's just because Maple is really good. <laughs> my, Maple played, I, in my opinion, really good. Um, it, it was just like, roaming all around the map, uh, trying to get catch with LeBlanc and stuff like this. So even though we, we won the first game, we still banned it after because we, like, we knew that he was the playmaker of the team, but he, just, he was just playing really, really good, like doing the entire series, in my opinion. I want to stay on the first game because you did get a pentakill at the at the Baron um, when you guys sort of turned the game around at that point. I just want to ask you about that Baron call because, as I did say, you were starting to fall behind a little bit in the mid game, and you gained vision around the Baron pit and you went for it. What sort of gave you the confidence to make that Baron call and eventually lead to your pentakill? Um, I, I mean, at this point, it's mid to late game, so we are tanky enough to tank Baron and don't lose too much HP, and we had a lot of damage, so we just like. Okay, let's let's try to, to rush it, right? And they are doing. I think they are on Drake. So um, since we saw them going on Drake, we're like, okay, let's try to rush Baron. In the end, they didn't do Drake. I think they they just like try to come to to us on Baron, and there's just a fight happening. No one no one focused me, and I just I just could reset ultimates. That's ba basic uh, noob Darius. It's just how they, sometimes it rolls with Darius. Now, in the second game, uh, you actually went up against a Malphite uh, played by um, Stake. And again, in the mid game, he landed a really good ultimate that almost sort of put the game back into the Flash Wolves' favor. What's sort of the communication in that fight? Because it looked like there was some indecision that led up to the moment where Stake landed like the three man ultimate. Um, the communication at f uh, it was to, to go on the Mal Malphite because he was like alone, but we did not talk, like. There's like the the bush and there's the the cliff just mm -hmm. up, and they are just behind it. But we didn't account for them to like just flashing over it and and Malphite going on us. So we should have just like get the chunk on Malphite and then back off. I didn't have flash either, so it was like we are behind the they are behind the wall, but they could easily go on us. So I don't think we should have this position at all. Not even probably chunk him. It was really risky. So that's it. Now, earlier you said you think that your picks and bans were better. I wanted to specifically ask you about one of the picks was the Jinx pick, because uh, towards the end of the tournament, more and more people were picking Jinx and seeing the power of Jinx and having a lot of success with Jinx. Now, you guys left it up in the first and second game to NL, who's quite a good Jinx player, but in game three, you decided to pick it away. Was there a sort of change in mindset for you to go from leaving the Jinx open to taking it away? Um, game three... I can't, I, I can't really say for game three. I think this is the game that we didn't really have such a good draft, in my opinion. Uh, but on game four, we went for the Jinx because we had the Lulu. So it was really good. Like, they, they, they didn't even have a tank. They had Yerela, which is a bruiser, but she was not like as tanky. So Jinx could freely hit. So we just needed to wait for like a few items. Lulu, two slash three items. Jinx two free items as well, then we'll just like roll on them. 
I wanted to ask you about your lane matchup against Stake because Stake came into this event uh, receiving a lot of criticism, um, particularly you know being ranked as among some perhaps some of the worst players at this event. Um, but I think he actually showed a pretty solid performance. How do you think that Stake has performed throughout this event, watching his games um, in Group A and now playing against him in this series? And I don't think that anyone besides pro players or close people to teams know like how well people play anyways. So I don't think Steak was like bad at all. Uh, he didn't really have like so many resources as well from his team. They, they focused a lot more on middle, especially in lane swap. Try to gank from both side mids and stuff like this. So they are not like really playing for top anyway. So it's really, it's really easy to critic uh, top player when the team is not really playing for top, right? So. I mean, he, he played good overall. He had some good plays, and I think he deserves to be there. Uh, next up, you guys are on the side of the bracket um, with uh, SK Telecom and AHQ. There was a little bit, when the, when the draw was happening, there was actually a moment where it looked like Origin was perhaps going to play Fnatic, and I think a lot of people thought that you were going to play Fnatic. Did you guys ever have a moment where it looked like you might have to play Fnatic? And what did you sort of think about how this bracket has panned out with you on the side of SK Telecom and AHQ? Um, we fought at first, but like we reacted fast and we were like, no, we gotta play them. Yeah. Um, the side of SKT HQ, um, I expect SKT to win pretty convincingly. Um, and us maybe facing uh, SKT, I think it's gonna be really hard. Um, I don't like, if I, if I need to be like truly honest, I think uh, they'll probably win against us, but we can maybe put up a fight. What do you think one of the things that is, the, you know, the most important things for you to work on or focus on if you are going to stand up to SK Telecom? Um, be a better team during the early game. I think our early game is our weakest point, really. So we need to, we need to play really good early games overall. Congratulations on reaching the top four. Thank you very much. Be sure to download our app available on the iOS App Store and Google Play Store and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content.